I always look forward to different meals during the day, but know it can be challenging to find inspiration regarding what to cook. So I thought I'd share three of my favorite go-to meals I've been cooking this past month, and I'm happy to be partnering with Milo Cookware to share these recipes. Cast iron cookware has been a staple in our household due to its durability and longevity, but it's also more sustainable, safe, and versatile than other cookware. I've been using Milo's beautiful three-piece set in black, which works beautifully on the stove, oven, and tabletop as a serving piece. The three-piece set includes the ultimate skillet, the classic Dutch oven, and universally compatible lid. Best of all, each piece is made with 40% recycled cast iron, is compliant with Proposition 65, and includes a lifetime warranty, something I can really appreciate as a consumer. If you're interested in investing in a set of cast iron cookware, do check out Milo's latest Kickstarter with the link below in the description box, which features six new colors ranging from eucalyptus to terracotta. You'll be able to get the cookware at affordable prices with additional discounts. So if you're like me and have been looking for that investment cooking piece, look no further. The first meal I'll be cooking is something I've been craving for brunch. A simple mix of either scrambled eggs or tofu and a side of pan fried potatoes and veggies. I'll start with removing the tofu and wrapping it with a napkin to help remove excess moisture so that the tofu scramble is easier to cook. I like to stack on some additional ceramic plates to help remove the moisture as well. Next, I'll start prepping my vegetables. First, I'll work on washing and chopping up some sweet potatoes into cubes. You can definitely use regular potatoes as well to switch up the flavor. The last veggie I'll be washing and chopping is some broccoli. Feel free to use any vegetables you have on hand, whether it's bell peppers, onions, kale, or mushrooms. Anything goes for this breakfast plate, but the more variety and color, the better. To start cooking, I'll get some water to a boil in the Milo Classic Dutch Oven. Once it's ready, I'll put in the cubed sweet potatoes and boil them for five to seven minutes until I can poke a fork through. While the potatoes are boiling, I'll move on to prepping my tofu scramble. Remove the tofu blocks from the napkin and place them in a bowl and mash with a fork. Once that's complete, it's time to fry up the tofu. I'll be heating Milo's ultimate skillet for the scramble, turning on my stove to medium heat and adding about a tablespoon of oil. Once it's hot, the mashed tofu can go right in. When it comes to seasoning, I like to go with the flow. Sometimes I like to put in some chopped onions and garlic first, but today I'm adding in about two teaspoons of paprika, two teaspoons of cumin, as well as salt and pepper to taste. There are various ways to spice your tofu though, so have fun with it and adjust as you go. Allow the tofu to continue cooking on medium heat and continue to stir. This will allow the moisture to evaporate so you have flavorful tofu crumbles. Remove and place into a bowl or container once the water is gone. Be sure to check on your sweet potatoes as well and once it's done and a fork can be poked through, go ahead and take it out.
Next step, I'm adding my broccoli to the skillet. Again, use any vegetables you have on hand. I'm sauteing it in a bit of oil, salt, and pepper to keep things simple. Remove your vegetables from the pan once they're done and put about two tablespoons of oil into the skillet. I'll be frying up the sweet potatoes to give them a nice crisp edge and adding a bit of salt and seasoning. Continue to fry on medium heat until crisp edges are formed. And voila, a simple mix of veggies, healthy carbs, and protein. I love putting in a dash of hot sauce for an extra kick, or sometimes pair this plate with some sliced avocado or a squeeze of lime or lemon. It's a simple recipe that you can make beforehand, and I also love using the ingredients for breakfast burritos, bowls, and more. And of course, I've also saved some of the boiled sweet potatoes for Cooper as a snack. He loves sweet potatoes and it's one of his favorite treats. The second recipe I'll be making is a large pot of veggie gumbo. I love a hearty stew with a side of rice. And I'm going to be using Milo's classic Dutch oven for this one pot recipe which I'm pretty excited for, because I'll know I'll make plenty to share with my family. I'll start by washing and chopping all the vegetables. For the base of the stew, I'll be using one onion, around five to six cloves of garlic, four stalks of celery, and one bell pepper. You can use whatever vegetables you have on hand, but I'll be using about a pound of mushrooms half a head of chopped cauliflower, and a little extra purple cabbage I need to finish from my fridge. Once everything is washed and chopped, I'll go ahead and heat up my Dutch oven. I'm going to start by making a roux which consists about a quarter cup of oil or vegan butter of your choice. Once all of the oil is heated, I'll go ahead and add in some flour, mixing it in on medium heat until thickened. This will allow the overall gumbo to become more thick and creamy once you cook it down. Once the roux is a consistent thick paste, I'll throw in the chopped garlic, onion, celery, and bell pepper. I'll also add a dash of salt in the mix to help everything cook down, and we'll let it go for a few minutes, constantly mixing the roux to combine with the vegetables to make sure that everything is fully covered. Once everything is mixed and cooked for a few minutes, I'll go ahead and add the vegetable broth. I'm adding in about three cups of water, which will cover all the rest of the ingredients I have yet to put into the pot. I personally have some veggie broth powder, so we'll be putting that in with the water and mixing until combined. Once everything is mixed, it's time to put in all the remaining ingredients. So all the rest of the chopped vegetables, as well as some kidney beans, which I had cooked in a large batch the night before, and also some canned tomato, which I took a little late out of the freezer, but we'll go ahead and let it thaw in the mix. The original recipe also calls for Cajun seasoning and some bay leaves, so I also added these and gave everything a good mix before allowing it to simmer for around 20 minutes. It's also the perfect opportunity to clean up a few things in the kitchen while you wait.
Once the 20 minutes are up, mix and adjust the overall flavor with salt, pepper, and Cajun seasoning as needed. And then with that, you're all ready to have a comforting, balanced veggie gumbo, which is perfect with a side of rice. You can also feel free to top it off with some fresh cilantro or green onion. This was so, so good, and I hope some of you will be able to enjoy it too. The final meal I'll be making is a veggie lasagna. Sometimes you want that lasagna flavor, but you don't want all the guilt associated with it. I was inspired by a really lovely spaghetti squash casserole from a restaurant I visited, and I wanted to make something similar at home. For the casserole, we'll need to wash and chop a few veggies. I'll be slicing up some onion, zucchini, mushrooms, and an eggplant. All these vegetables will be layered into the Milo Ultimate Skillet along with some sauce and cheese. Before we layer in all the ingredients, I'll actually go ahead and saute the vegetables with some olive oil, salt, and some basil. I'm going to first work on browning the onions to bring out the sweetness and depth of flavor. Then I'll add and mix in the mushrooms as well. You can definitely go ahead and saute all the vegetables at once, but I find that sauteing each vegetable separately will allow you to control the flavor profiles a bit more. Once the mushrooms and onions are nicely browned, I'll remove them from the skillet and switch to sauteing the zucchini and eggplant in a similar fashion. Go ahead and preheat your oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. To your skillet, or if you have a baking dish, add some pasta sauce of your choice to the bottom of the skillet, ensuring that there's a thin layer throughout the bottom. Then go ahead and start layering in your vegetables, add your favorite cheese or vegan cheese of choice, and continue to alternate your ingredients layer by layer. Once you get to the top, be sure to reserve some sauce and cheese to top it all off. I like to sprinkle a little extra oregano and pepper as well for a nice touch. When your oven is ready to go, place the skillet in the oven and bake for about 30 to 40 minutes. You can always check in at 30 minutes and if you notice there's a lot of liquid in your dish, you can put it in for a bit longer. And there you have it, a delicious, flavorful veggie lasagna packed with all different kinds of vegetables. It reminds me a bit of ratatouille and its comforting flavors, but it's definitely more fuss-free. If you'd like more information on the recipes I made today, do check out the blog posts in the description box, and I hope this video inspired a few future meals for you in the case you're running out of ideas. A big thank you to Milo Cookware for partnering with me on this fun video as well. And be sure to consider their beautiful pots and skillets as an investment piece for your own kitchen. With that, thanks so much for watching and if you guys have any questions about any of the recipes mentioned or about my experience with the cookware, do let me know in the comments below. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day and also start to your week.